Senators, this cannot be our future. This cannot be the future of America. We cannot have presidents inciting and mobilizing mob violence against our government and our institutions because they refuse to accept the will of the people under the Constitution of the United States. Much less can we create a new January exception in our precious, beloved Constitution that prior generations have died for and fought for so the corrupt presidents have several weeks to get away with whatever it is they want to do. History does not support a January exception in any way, so why would we invent one for the future? The reason that I am having trouble with the, with the argument is the American people just spoke, and they just changed administrations. So in the light most favorable to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle here, their system works. The people are smart enough in the light most favorable to them. They're smart enough to pick a new administration if they don't like the old one. And they just did. And he's down there at Pennsylvania Avenue now probably wondering how come none of my stuff is happening up at the Capitol. I know many of us have similar experiences from that day, but I'll briefly share mine. I stood with colleagues in the gallery above the House floor to observe the Arizona challenge. Moments later, police radios reported a breach of the Capitol grounds. Someone shouted up to us, duck, then lie down, then ready your gas masks. Shortly after, there was a terrifying banging on the chamber doors. I will never forget that sound, shouts and panicked calls to my husband and to my sons, instructions to flee, and then the constant whirring of the gas masks filtering the air. The chamber of the United States House of Representatives turned to chaos. While Vice President Pence presided over the joint session, Trump supporters began their assault on our Capitol. Radio communications from the Metropolitan Police Department highlight how during and following President Trump's speech, Trump supporters descended on the Capitol and became increasingly violent. What you are about to hear has not been made public before. Multiple Capitol entries! Multiple Capitol entries! 1318. They 12 to 5th and we're coming around uh, from the south side. Be advised, the speech ended. Intel, be advised, you got a group of about 50 uh, charging up the hill on the west front, uh, just north of the, of the stairs. Uh, they're approaching the wall now. Uh, they're starting to dismantle the reviewing stand and throwing metal poles at us. Cruiser 50, give me DSO up here now! DSO! Multiple law enforcement entries! DSO, get up there! Alright, we're 30 seconds out. We need some reinforcements up here now. They're starting to pull the gates down. They're throwing metal poles at us. Cruiser 50, do you still get up here? Okay, we're here. 12 to 50, we're here. Oh, you just had an explosion go on up here. I know the fireworks or what, but they're starting to explode explosives. Fireworks material. This next video shows their approach and the initial breach of the Capitol complex. Remember to watch the red dot, which broke is being tracking throughout this incident.
Now we're going to show you through security footage that has not been made public before what that same breach looked like from the inside. Now because this is security footage, there's no sound. Note as the video begins, we are seeing the inside view as the mob approaches from outside and beats the windows and doors. You can see that the rioter first break the window with the wooden beam that you saw previously, and a lone police officer inside responds and begins to spray the first man who enters, but is quickly overwhelmed. I want you to pay attention to the first group of assailants as they break into the building. The second man through the window is wearing full tactical body armor and is carrying a baseball bat. Others are carrying riot shields. Among this group are members of the Proud Boys, some of whom, like Dominic Pizzola, who was recently indicted on federal conspiracy charges, we will discuss later. Can watch where they're coming on our model as well. Officer Goodman passes Senator Mitt Romney and directs him to turn around in order to get to safety. On the first floor, just beneath them, the mob had already started to search for the Senate chamber. Uncertain what would happen next, I sent a text message to my wife. I love you and the babies. Please hug them for me. I imagine many of you sent a similar message. Ashley Babbitt attempted to climb through a shattered window into the House lobby. To protect the members in the lobby, an officer discharged his weapon, and she was killed. I want to warn everyone that the next video, which shows her death, is graphic.